Disco Dodgeball is actually available. I didn't even know. I might pick up the uh, track because they are awesome tunes. This is a borderline to where the future leaves us behind. The fire will burn and never die. Looking through the hours of a brand new life. The soldiers find me, just find me. Sparks will fly if we scream. Uh, all right, see, will do. Upgraded from an E to an F. Don't look back, we're here to stay. <laughs> Thank you, Sploosh. This is it, the borderline. To Amazing. The future leaves us behind. The fire will burn and never die. Time man. Thanks for the follow. Uh, T, those look really cool. I'm gonna have to try them on uh, the page, see how the layout is. But uh, I really appreciate that. That's really cool. Thank you. All right, see you, baby P. Take care. Have a good sleep. Hey, Bodacious.
All right. Mic test, one, two. Eric, can you hear me? I don't know if my mic's working. Free talk mode. All right, Eric, can you hear me? Are we connected? I don't think we are. Give me a minute, guys. I'm going to restart raid call. <laughs> that open mic, though. <laughs> he snuck in. <laughs> Testing one, two, potato. Yes, sir. All right, hopefully this works. Eric, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Woohoo! Yeah, I can hear you. All right, right. fantastic. It's awesome. Uh, your mic's just a touch loud. All right, how's this? Is that any better? Yeah, that's better. All right. Awesome. So thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us and, and stopping on by. Um, are you, I'm just curious, are you in the chat as well right now, or you're just hanging out on Raid Call? Um, I'm on Raid Call, and is there a different chat? Uh, it's just Magna, <laughs> Magna Gaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash oh, Magna Gaming. Got it. Yeah, let me open that up. Okay. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Millie, yes, I did sleep well. Thanks for asking, buddy. Um, so, also, just a heads up, um, I'm not sure, uh, are you familiar with Twitch at all? Uh, yes. <laughs> As, okay. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair enough. Um, there is uh, about a 30-second delay between um, when we're going to be talking and when chat's going to be able to hear it. Um, oh, yeah. So, we may get uh, some off offbeat questions at times, but just a heads up on that. Um, yep, that's cool. And if I um, if if I miss some questions, it's probably because I was focusing on the game. So uh, fair enough. Not because I'm trying to be a jerk. <laughs> that's awesome, man. All right, so uh, I'm gonna load this up. Um, and I guess uh, guys, if you are in chat and you have this game as well, I know if a number of you guys picked it up the other day. Um, we are gonna be playing this. Uh, so let me just find this on my desktop here. Where is this? I have like 5,000 icons. I really should clean up my desktop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I always get embarrassed whenever I show my desktop to people because it's a mess. And I feel like <laughs> as a, like you all see that on like your parents' computers where you're like, oh my God, like mom, like clean up your desktop. But then I look at my own. I'm like, yeah, this is still pretty bad. Right, exactly. I'm like exactly. a tech savvy person. That's awesome. So um, I, I guess I, I, I have a couple questions myself. My, my first question to you is... How the heck did you come up with the concept for <laughs> Robot Roller Derby Disco Dodgeball? Yeah. Uh, just, okay, so growing up, we played a lot of GoldenEye, and my favorite setting was License to Kill. Nice. So that's one hit, one kill. And then Throwing Knives. Um, and so that's where, like, you know, you're in the facility, and you, you pick up, like, just infinite throwing knives. And they're just whizzing past your head, and you know, like, if they nick you in the shoulder, you're dead. Right. And it's just super high stakes, ridiculous stuff. And I felt that dodgeball has this really awesome, you know, one hit, one kill. It's projectile warfare. It has all these awesome elements for a great shooter game. Like the stuff to me that's the most fun, as opposed to like spam clicking, right? Like, right. There's no like drama there, right? Like when you have one bullet, like a sniper rifle, like way more exciting to me. Um, and when you lead someone, it's harder to hit them. So when you do, it feels way better. But no one had made a first-person dodgeball game, and I just thought that had to be... That was silly, right? Like, why why didn't this exist? Um, and so I just set out to make it. Um, so that was the dodgeball part. Because, I mean, everyone is familiar with dodgeball, right? I mean, it's everyone grows up with it, I yeah. think, at some point. So that was another big thing, is like, uh, previously I made kind of these uh, strategy games that were a lot of instructions and complicated and... It's just really hard to pitch and really hard to get people excited about, but everybody, right, everybody, you know what to do with dodgeball. You see the ball, you pick it up, and you throw it at someone, right? Like, I don't need a tutorial. It's just like, does it, it you know, does all that stuff by itself. Right. Um, so I had that part, and I was, I was uh, just prototyping stuff, and I built this little level with a couple different platforms and stuff. And I was walking around this level, and I just thought, I, I want to, like, launch myself off this ramp. You know, I don't want to just standard, like, walk around. I want to be able to, like, fly through the air. 
right. and I can do 360s and catch a dodgeball and then, you know, hit someone with it before I hit the ground. And so I thought that adding a wheel, uh, you know, like vehicle style movement would be way more fun. Uh, plus, that way you can kind of predict where someone's gonna travel, right? If you can strafe, you know, super quick, quick style, you'll just never hit anyone from any distance. Right, exactly. But if you have this kind of like an inertia as they're flying through the air, uh, it becomes, it actually works really well with the projectile mechanic. So, I don't know, I was just playing around and I added it on a whim and it just immediately everything was clicking and I was like, okay, this combination uh, is is a winner. And then I just, you know, I like techno music, I love like dance clubs and thought it was just a nice ridiculous way to take it. Okay, that um, was my next question because I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of EDM and I absolutely, the soundtrack on this is, it blows my mind, I love it. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> thanks. Talk to, talk to me a bit about, uh, I guess, some of the people that maybe you partnered up where you got the music from. Uh, I know the soundtrack is available on its own, right? Uh, yeah, it is. It's on Bandcamp. You can just look up Disco Dodgeball. Do you want to start up a game, by the way, while we're chatting? Yeah, yeah, I'm just getting it uh, loaded up here. I gotcha. Um, yes, let me know what their room uh, name is. I don't know if you want to do... You can probably do public. It's not like it'll get too flooded. Um, oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Let's see, yeah, so uh, the first person I found, the name is Adhesive Wombat, and you probably haven't heard of that name, no. but you've definitely heard the music because it was in the Super Hot trailer, which kind of like blew up around the internet. Uh, like that song made the trailer. It's just such a badass song. Wow. And so I, I looked him up on uh, SoundCloud, whatever, and he had an amazing, all his songs are great. And so I picked uh, four, because that was all I could afford. Um, for the original set. Um, after that, I, I hired a guy named uh, An Octave. Uh, well, his, his name is Ian, but um, he had done the music for a virus named Tom, which is an indie game from a couple years back and had a really good soundtrack. Um, so, and then a couple people just messaged me off Reddit, or they just like seen the trailer and contacted me out of the blue. Right. So that's how I got um, Danny Never Ending and uh, Crate was the most recent addition. And I just, I love that there's these people that are making amazing music, um, and they're, they're just, like, nobody knows about them, really. And so, I hope that the game can kind of be a platform for them. And, uh, you're in 605, right? Yeah, 605. Join up. Um, you know, hopefully this will like give more exposure to these people because they're they're making just the music is so good and i was just <laughs> i was happy to find it like i didn't have to you know i, w I would actually love to license the glitch mob <laughs> i'm actually like trying to pursue that right uh, seriously but um but it's also really fun to, to find these people that you know kind of like me like i don't i don't have any real name out there um but uh i like to think that you know, if you find uh, good quality people that they, you know, they can still make good stuff even if you, they don't have a big name yet. Absolutely. Now, was this the uh, was this one of the first games that you you created? Do you have other stuff that you've worked on? So I used to work in uh, mobile. So I was a iOS developer, writing everything native in Xcode, and um, I just got really, really sick of the market. Um, so I know even you know people are talking about how Steam is flooded. Right. It is nothing compared to mobile it's um and you look at the stuff that's selling on mobile or making a ton of money and it's all like the same junk um right it's, candy uh, crush <laughs> it's candy crush but there's also just like makeover simulators and like <laughs> but the, there's then there's like 50 of them and it's just like who's who's paying for this and and so just like you can't it's such a crapshoot because you know Ideally, like, Apple will put you in their new Noteworthy. If you don't get that, forget it. Like, you're making 10 bucks. Right. Literally 10 bucks. Um, so they feature you, but even new Noteworthy, like, wasn't doing anything. So I was like, this is just, there's no way to stand out. Um, you know, the, the type of games I like to make are kind of these more, like, involved, you know, like I said, strategy titles, like, stuff that's maybe not super easy to pitch. Um, or something like this that involves, like, like, you're playing it for half an hour at a time. Like, I don't really make games that you can play for five minutes and then put down. Right. You know, basically, like, you know, bathroom games. Not to, like, discourage right. all mobile titles, because there's good stuff there, but, like, most of the time you're playing them uh, on the toilet. And, like, I don't really <laughs> make games that work well for that uh, format, so... 
Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, so... trying to play this on the toilet would probably be a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I don't know. So, I just kind of saw how things were changing, and I liked what was happening with Greenlight, and thought that might be, you know, before that, there was no way I could ever get on Steam. Um, and I thought I'd give it a shot, and unfortunately I was like a little bit late, because right around the time I got on Steam, it was opening up. Right. And what that meant is you didn't really get any, you know, immediate free promotion. Right, um, right. Like, it, it was no longer a golden ticket at that point, right? Um, so it's kind of this funny Catch-22 that you always want a store to be just open enough to allow you onto it, and then shut it down. Like, allow no, like, close the gates. Right. Um, because then you get, right, and like, you know, obviously I, I want a healthy platform with a lot of other people on it, but in a very cynical sense, it's like, oh man, like, I'm, I'm bummed that Steam is opening up because now there's going to be a lot more, uh, Right. Stuff it's, on it. it's but the I'm grind, sure there's right? people of that course. thought the same thing about me. <laughs> um, so, anyways, uh, but Steam is Steam is awesome. Um, it's already this is selling way better than anything I ever built on mobile. Um, and you just you find players that are way more engaged. Like on on mobile, you there's no forum where you can talk to people that play your game. Right. Um, where Steam has all the forums built in. Like people are are way more excited about the game. They'll. Um, you good feedback, they'll give you suggestions, they care about it a lot more than some, you know, kind of throwaway mobile titles, so um, I'm just really, really happy with the format change, and I, I kind of wish I'd just done it a year or two earlier, but... Now, I was, uh, right? I, I was playing this uh, a little while ago, and I, I know there's been a ton of updates, like, graphically things look uh, a lot better from what, you know, when I first was introduced to the game. Uh, power ups, all sorts of things. Like, talk to me a bit about your the the updates, the development schedule. Yeah. Um, so f I, I try to kind of switch things up a bit, right? So, like, I'll I'll make one update based on content. So I'll add a new level or add a new game mode, and then the next one it's it's kind of more. You know, I'll add some server options that people want. Like lately, I added the ability to. Um, uh, what was the big thing? I guess, uh, so a live stream mode where you can assign teams yourself. It also has team auto-balancing. Um, stuff that, like, doesn't really get you excited, but it's, like, utility stuff that you kind of need for a shooter like this. Gotcha. Um, I also, I'm trying to organize a big, like, live stream tournament. I want to, like, push the Twitch angle a little more. Um, and what I'm, what I've been worried about the whole time is that, uh, people could log on to a live stream and then, like, kick the host, oh. or, um, you know, because, like, you just need, right now, three votes to kick someone, which is not ideal. <laughs> it was kind of a hack. Um, or, like, or the live streamer might not be able to make it on a team because they, like, shuffled around, and, like, that's no good. And so I've been, like, really paranoid that some giant streamer would play the game and then, like, <laughs> get booted out or, like, trolled or something. That'd be so I had this... Yeah, well... <laughs> funny for a little bit. Um, no, it so would be this... hilarious. <laughs> it, it would be funny, in hindsight. <laughs> At the time, I'd be freaking out. Um, so anyways, that kind of stuff that just makes it a little more robust from that end. Um, that, uh, you know, that this game kind of needs. And so, basically from here on out, I want to add more polish to the interface, because the, uh, you know, all the text is kind of just flat and boring and ugly looking. Um, the arenas still need a little more kind of depth to them. There's there's not a lot of geometry to them. Right. And I think with just a little bit more kind of these LEDs on the side and and more like uh, you know visual effects and whatnot, um, it'll it'll look a lot better in screenshots and whatnot. But it, it's in a pretty good place. The um, I messed with the visuals a lot, and I actually like erased a lot of changes I had made. I started going down this path of semi-realistic with, you know, metal grates and... Yeah. And it just, it didn't work because uh, I'll never be able to... Like... Sorry, let me explain. Um, if you go quasi-realistic, it just looks like bad. Right. Like, you have to go all abstract or all realistic, and I just, you know, I don't have a million dollar budget. I'm never gonna make it look like, you know, Unreal Tournament. <laughs> right, fair enough. So I kind of dialed it back to this a lot more just, you know, reflective, sleek, 
Um, very bright, bright LED corners on everything. It's, so it's still not there, but it's, at least it's kind of the direction I think I found where I want to take it. Um, and it's a direction that doesn't need a huge art investment because, you know, realistically, I just don't have the budget. Um, you know, obviously, I would I would love to uh, hire a bunch of AAA artists and make this thing look <laughs> like a like a freaking you know, so it can like line up right with a Call of Duty or anything. But it's just you know. Yeah, but <laughs> you know what? I, happen. To be honest, I feel that uh, this this the look fits in well. I, I mean, even the title. You, you, as soon as someone hears about the game, and you can never say, like, part of the game. You can't just say Disco Dodgeball or right. anything. <laughs> you have to say Robot Roller Derby Disco Dodgeball, and you have yeah. to say it multiple times. It's just, it's goofy, it's fun, it doesn't take itself too seriously, and I think uh, people appreciate that. Yeah, and I, I think, I mean, that's the whole style with the game. Like, it's, it's not a realistic military modern shooter. It's <laughs> something really silly you can play for, like, you know, ideally a while, but... If you just want to blow off steam for half an hour, like, it's awesome. Like, there's no... It doesn't, like, make you as angry as, like, playing uh, Dota or anything. Or dealing um, with uh, and it's Counter-Strike kind of this. Yeah, right, like... <laughs> so it, it's kind of meant as this, like, lighthearted, like, anti-FPS or something. You know, just, just something kind of different and, and a little more down to basics. And, right, so the name fits into that, and I think the visuals fit into that, too. Um, and the, you know, the key thing is you have to know your audience, you have to know your market. And someone that really wants the, the highest resolution graphics and like all these amazing graphical effects, um, they're not going to buy my game anyways. Um, and you just, you basically play to your strengths and you, you're not going to compete against Modern Warfare on graphics. Right. So you compete against them on gameplay and try to make something that's more fun and more interesting than the kind of stuff they're trying to do. And I would, you know, I'd like to think that people recognize that the gameplay matters more than the graphics. It obviously has to look passable, <laughs> um, but no one's going to play this because, like, oh, like, the graphics are so good. They're going to play it because it's, like, stupid fun they can play with their friends, right? Exactly, that's, that's what yeah. I'm going for. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's just about kind of knowing your limitations. Very cool. So, um, outside of, uh... Robot Roller Derby Disco Dodgeball. What's your What's your favorite game to play? Um, huh. <laughs> let me think. Uh, I mean, I honestly I do play a lot of Modern Warfare. Like I I love multiplayer games. Um, I love Towerfall. Um, there's it's just like, hey, have you played that at all? Have I played a Modern Warfare? Uh, sorry, uh, Towerfall. Oh, Towerfall. No. Uh, do, so have you have you heard of it? You know no, what, no, I have no idea what it is. Okay, okay. So it's to me one of the best local multiplayer games ever built. Um, it's four-player archery combat, 2D. So it's kind of like a platformer, um, but your weapons are these little arrows, and you can kind of aim them in all directions. Um, but the everything about the game is like the 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 polish, the animation, the sound. Um, and it's just super, super fun. And like, if, if you know, if you got some friends over, um, we, we would uh, rent a cabin for a week and you know do game dev during the day and then night right. games. And we'd project Towerfall onto the wall and just you know have a bunch of beers and play it till like four in the morning. That's awesome. It's just a great, great like lo you know local game. Um, so I play that whenever I get a chance. Uh, obviously, you know, local it's harder to get people together, but. Um, what else? Um, I just started up Shadowrun Returns. Okay. And I'm, you know, maybe an hour into it, but I'm, I'm already loving kind of the story of the direction. The idea of mixing in, you know, fantasy tropes like orcs and stuff with this kind of steampunky hacker uh, style is, is amazing. Right. And I love, I love turn-based RPGs, too. Um, I play a lot of those, so... Very cool. Well, um, I'll have to, I'll have to uh, take a look at both those games. And as everyone knows, I mean, I'm amazing at platformers, so um, <laughs> that'll be uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. Um, Gone Quasi is saying, is inertia slash momentum a big factor here? Um, I, I think so. 
as you were missing, yeah, right? That's one of the, like, uh, when people first play it, it kind of throws them off because you don't actually have an immediate, uh, like, strafing abilities. You, you have momentum in one direction, and when you launch off a ramp, you don't have direct air control. You know, you can kind of use your boost to nudge you onto a, a ramp or something, but for the most part, when you're in the air, you're going in that direction until you land. Um, which is definitely, so it throws people off, but it's very, very intentional, and I, I don't think I'd ever change it. Right. Um, because when you, when you land on the ledge, it adds a little more strategy to your movement, I think, when you have to plan things out ahead of time. And, you know, you have the boost, you have, you have a jump that you can charge up to different levels, so you actually have a little more control over your, your trajectory than you might think, but it's all about planning it out ahead of time. And I think that kind of adds to the kind of skillful element of, you know, movement and throwing. It's it's very, very high skill versus, you know, just spam clicking or something. Um, you know, not that Quake isn't high skill, but it's, <laughs> it's kind of a different, it's, it's a whole different kind of flow. Right. Um, and and again, it's all about kind of how it complements the, the throwing aspect, too. Like, it works really well because you can kind of predict where people are going to go. And now, if you had full uh, air control, you'd just never hit, hit anyone. Right. Uh, well... Apparently, I can't hit anyone anyways, but uh, <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, yeah. Gustav the Cat is asking, I'm not sure if this is for you or for me. I would guess we could both answer. Uh, what do you think of Splatoon? I, I've never even heard of it, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I've heard of it either. Let me I'll do a quick search on that. Oh, that's the one where you're painting arenas. It's like a new Wii U game. Oh. Um, so I, I, I don't PC know Master the whole story. Race, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, casuals, filthy. Um, no, so you're you're basically running around this arena, and it looks like you're it's territory control. So you're trying to paint the walls with your color. Gotcha. Um, it sounds cool. I mean, what's really funny is is shooters are kind of going in this direction of they're going of more color and trying to switch things up a bit. Like obviously, Modern Warfare had a great run. It's you know they're still going to make that for 20 more years. Um, but you're seeing with a lot of shooters, they're, they're going back to the kind of colorful, crazy aspect. Right. Back to the arena combat kind of thing. Um, obviously, I like that. I want that. Um, I think Dodgeball plays well into that trend of, you know, there's a lot of color in this game. It's not just the grays and browns. Um, so Splatoon is definitely going that angle. Um, what's the other one where uh, it's like a PS4 game, I think, and you're... The energy drink mutated all the people and into mutants. Oh and blah, blah, blah. yeah, I heard about that. I forgot like the name of it. Flying around. Um, that's funny. <laughs> um, but the other kind of trend on that is is games that have a lot more fluid movement as well, right? So it's kind of boring when you're just walking around. You know, Battlefield 4 has jets and tanks and stuff, but um, there's also just a lot of kind of you're on your own two feet. And I think games are kind of embracing the um, the more parkour aspects. It's just way more fun when you're flying around. Kind of tribe style, right? Where you have a right. ton of uh, s speed and skill-based movement. Because um, it's just, it's way more fun than just walking around. Like, that's boring. <laughs> so, I like I like Nacho's uh, comment in-game. You should make a super rare Eric bot that's AI. <laughs> it's, it's bonkers. Yeah, yeah. Just like every dodgeball is homes in on the enemy. <laughs> I like it. Oh, I couldn't um, catch that one. Well done. Uh, so, so let's see, it's 78 to 83, uh, with just under two minutes left, so... Um, I have the boomerang ball power up, that's a power up I just added. Um, and basically you can throw a ball and it will return to you if it hits any player or surface. Uh, which is cool, you can get a lot of uh, mid-air alley-oops off it. Oh wow. And you can also kind of take a little more risky long distance throws because you know you'll probably get another, uh, you'll get it right back. Right. Is, um, uh, Zephyr Gaming is asking, is this a Unity game, a Unity based game, and, uh, did you program and design everything yourself? Uh, yep, this is a Unity game. It's my first Unity game. Um, I love Unity, um, particularly coming from a world where I had to do everything myself, like, a world where, like, Drawing a triangle on the screen took a day, <laughs> and a lot of swearing to get right. Um, and Unity, you can prototype so fast, uh, and experiment, and, and do all kinds of crazy stuff. 
And like I said with the wheel, like that is a critical part of the game, and it was just an experiment. And if I was building everything natively and had to do all the physics myself, I right, just wouldn't have bothered. <laughs> like, I don't have a week to add a wheel. Um, and so that iteration is, is just so key, and Unity really allows you to do that. Like anything where you're not building your own engine, uh, we're falling behind. Um, but yeah, Unity is great. Um, a lot of developers I know are using it. Um, it'll be really curious to see what happens because you know, Unreal is doing this kind of really cheap subscription model. Uh, I think they felt like they had to because Unity was getting such a huge lead. Um, but uh, yeah, I love Unity. The, the problem is a lot of Unity games have this like Unity look because the lighting is maybe not that great. Um, so it doesn't. It, you can tell when a game is Unity. You can kind of tell when a game is Unreal. It just looks a little bit better. Um, obviously, people have made great stuff in Unity, um, but it, it, you kind of can't really go with a realistic style. It doesn't work quite as much. Right. That's another reason why I like the, the changes I made uh, lately to the visuals on this game to back away from realism. So um, with the with the different maps, like uh, I noticed this map, it's a lot uh, a lot less space. It's a lot. You're in tight here. It's a hectic battlefield. How do you like when you're designing these levels? What do you what do you think about? How do you come up with these ideas? Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you just kind of throw something together and. <laughs> Yeah, it, a lot of it, a lot of the levels were, um, you know, I have this general idea or something sketched out on uh, pencil and paper. And then you build it and realize, okay, that doesn't work or it needs a ramp here. Um, for a lot of the maps, I wanted something that, you know, that have different movement options, different um, layers. They all do kind of have a slightly different flavor. Um, this one is intentionally very open. Uh, there's something about this wide open space that it makes things a little bit different because you have a lot more long distance throws and you're really playing that risk reward game of you know do I get a little bit closer before I throw this or right um, you know when when do I go for the kill well this actually um, kind of reminds me more of traditional dodgeball I mean you're on a you're on a court yeah <laughs> it's very straightforward you kind of see where everyone's at yeah absolutely um, and a ton of people have been asking me for a, an option to put up a barrier in the middle that you can't cross as a player to make it a little more like traditional dodgeball. Oh wow, um, yeah, which okay. I should be able to add without too much trouble. Just, you know, there's a million things on the list to do. Um, but yeah, this this map was kind of built with that in mind, like kind of this big gymnasium style thing. And you have space, uh, you know, from one spawn to the other. Right. But it's it's still pretty close quarters, especially when you get, in this case, 12 people in the room. It's a little less crazy when you only have uh, six or eight, uh, but it's it's kind of all about that long distance and and maybe even you know one player distracts the enemy while the other goes in from the side because right. it's really hard to hit someone straight up from a long distance. Um, but yeah, they all they all just kind of have their own. I just pick different layouts and they all do kind of affect the gameplay a little bit more. I I try to theme them a little bit. Um, so they all have some kind of unique geometry to them, but, um, you know, ultimately I haven't invested that much time in, uh, you know, again, if you compare something like Modern Warfare, they all have very specific themes and buildings and, right. uh, you know, layouts, and, and a lot of these do, from one high level, kind of act similarly. Um, but I think when you play the game a lot, you do start seeing differences, and, and just the, the space that you get uh, can really change your tactics and teamwork. But maybe that's just me. <laughs> I, uh, I submitted to Indicate, and uh, one of the feedbacks was like, oh, all the levels kind of look the same. And it's I think if you play for five minutes, that's the impression you're going to get. Right. And, uh, you know, when you play for a lot longer, you'll start appreciating these subtle differences. Right on. Um, now, Kustoff uh, is asking um, yeah, about other game modes. Now, I know there are a few, uh, if you mm -hmm. maybe want to just get into that. And uh, before you do, I just want to give a quick shout-out. Uh, hello to everyone else who's uh, been popping in. Tricap, good to see you, buddy. Uh, Nemesis, welcome, Zeno. 
Uh, guys, we're, uh, if, if you're just tuning in, I'm actually hanging out with uh, Eric, the uh, dev of Robot Roller Derby Disco Dodgeball. Uh, he's in here playing with uh, myself and a few of the viewers. Uh, if you guys have a copy of the game, or if you don't yet have a copy of the game and you want to pick up a copy from Steam, uh, you can feel free to jump on in and join us. Uh, we'll be doing this for a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, game mode. So, what do we have? Are, are you adding more? What, what's going on with those? Um, yep, so what we have right now, uh, this is classic deathmatch. Um, and any of these modes you can usually play to a certain score limit or a certain time, right? So now we're doing like 10 minute deathmatch. Right. Um, there is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, there's score battle. So that's where all these little trick shots you can do, like no scope, 360 helicopters. Excuse me, one second. <clears throat> Had to take a drink. Yeah, no worries. Um, <laughs> Lots of talking. <laughs> yep. Um, or, you know, dunks or ricochets or catches. They all have a point value based on how hard they are to do. And in uh, score battle, you're competing to get a certain high score. And so in that in that mode, what's different is you kind of have to be a little more risky. You have to do a lot more mid-air stuff because that's how you're going to get more points. Um, so at some level, that kind of changes. You know, you're going to do a lot more big jumps that put you at greater risk for being hit, but allow you to uh, land those kind of tricky skill shots. Um, so that's score battle. There's elimination, which is the classic you get hit once you're out unless a teammate catches it. Okay. Um, a lot of people love that because it's very high stakes. Because um, in, in this mode, Deathmatch, like, it's just crazy. You know, you can just run around and hit people and like you don't really have to focus that much. But in Elimination, it's way more tactical. There's, you know, you're, you're moving slowly, you're peeking around corners. <laughs> um, and it, uh, I don't know, just, again, it's a small rule change, but it, it changes a lot about the tactics you can use. Um, Hoops is probably my favorite. So it's kind of like a Quidditch dodgeball. Okay. There's two uh, goal rings at the end of the arena, and you have to grab this golden special ball and throw it through the enemy goal ring. Um, and you score points. So you usually play like, you know, 10 or 15. Uh, what I love about that mode is it starts, you know, you really have to start thinking about teamwork in that mode. So, again, th in Deathmatch, you're just. You know, throwing dodgeballs, you don't really need to care about what your teammates are doing. Right. Um, but, but in hoops, you know, you can you can pass the ball to each other. The, the bots are actually programmed to pass to you if you're open. Oh, wow. Um, and you can pass to them. They'll wait by the hoop if they're open. You can pass to them. They'll score. You'll get the assist. Um, and there's something about uh, the teamwork aspect that starts making this game kind of stand out again from the others. Um, you know, in a lot of these other games, there's... Uh, you don't you don't have that kind of sport aspect to it, where you have kind of formations and you know passes and assists. And, right. Um, well, we may we uh, may have to try that uh, before uh, before you leave today. Yeah, I'd love I'd love to show it. Um, and the other the other thing I love about that is when you have that special ball, everyone is aiming for you, and so you you're running around, <laughs> you're dodging, it's crazy, and then you get to the point where like you finally have a shot at the hoop, and uh, it's hard to aim it. Um, well, you know, you just want to be careful. You don't want to miss because you don't get that many opportunities. But every extra millisecond you take is, you know, you're a target the whole time. And so that moment of charging up your shot and just hoping you survive long enough to get the aim down. Right. You know, even if it just, it's just half a second, but it feels like a really long time. Um, it's this amazing moment of kind of tension. And that makes it, again, feel way better when you when you actually score a point that way. Right. Um, now, um, my, I, my question I have for you, um, as, as much as I love being known as player, uh, how do I change <laughs> my username? That's funny. So, um, wait, sorry, excuse me, one second. I might have locked my wife out of the house. I'll be right back. <laughs> In like <laughs> Sounds 10 good. seconds. I've done that before. Uh-oh. Eric's going to be in trouble, guys. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way to do it. Options? Everyone else has their name changed except for me. <laughs> yeah, totally uh, locked her out. That's great. Yeah, I do that. I do that occasionally. <laughs> you just come home, you deadbolt the door, you don't think about it. <laughs> Bodacious um, says, goodbye, Eric, we loved you. <laughs> no. Recipes, so this is this yeah. is like the fiftieth time I've done this, so it's it's not a big deal. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> All right. I don't, it's not intentional. I just. Um. Anyways. Uh. Sorry. What we're we talking about? Yeah. How do I change my username? <laughs> oh yeah. So it should have used your um. Your Steam name, but uh, maybe that's a new bug I put in. Um, I'm looking at the scoreboard right now. So you're level 13. What you can do, you'll you'll lose the host, unfortunately. But okay. Um, once you're level 10, you can change it in the garage. There's a customize option. Oh, okay. Um, up. So originally, I had worried about allowing people to change their alias at will, because I thought people would maybe like troll a bit and you know enter offensive stuff and. I figured once they got into the game a little bit, they wouldn't be quite as, uh, you know, they'd see the community is not really toxic like that. Right, and they wouldn't committed. feel the need to, to do that. Yeah. But honestly, at this point, you know, the game is $10. It's not, you know, on the free web player, I had that problem a bit. But when someone buys the game on Steam, they're, they're probably not going to be um, intentionally disruptive. And if they are, I now have, like, kick options and whatnot. Right. Oh, this match is so close. It is I'm very close. 139. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. so, uh, so I'm going to exit the match here real quick. So I go okay. to Garage, and I can customize. Oh, wow, yeah. Yep. So um, that's where you can change your mustache. You can equip different sunglasses that you unlock as you play the game. Um, I obviously love to do a lot more customization stuff. Um, you know, people love that in multiplayer games. You want to kind of show off all the flair you have. Not gonna, not gonna um, lie, this is amazing. I had no idea you could like customize all the different mustaches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very important. <laughs> Number one feature. Oh, and um, shades. Okay, no, like Eric, you have no idea. I, <laughs> I, I spend hours on Day Z. We run around like finding hats and designer shades. That's all we care about. Yeah, yeah. So this is perfect. So what's also cool about this game, because it's ridiculous, like I can allow a lot of kind of ridiculous customization stuff, and it won't feel like weird, like like that it's ruining the fiction of the game. Right. Um, so I, I can't wait to dig more into that and you know open that up so that people can submit their own stuff. Um, probably pretty soon I want to add stuff where you can pick a clan, like a Steam group, and then that icon will show up on your back. <laughs> so then you get kind of like team uniforms. That's amazing. So that's something that might, you know, be, again, it's stuff that is just adds a lot of depth to any kind of multiplayer game. Very cool. Um, I so, did see one. Go I'm ahead. just I'm just loading up a, a hoops game here. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see what the room is. Room is two four six three for anyone who wants to jump into that. Uh, we get to try this game mode, and once again, I guess you can explain as we're going through it. Um, I, I did see another question that came in asking about uh, if on certain maps do uh, the balls tend to collect in certain areas? Um, yeah. <clears throat> I saw that question too and really wanted to address it because it's an awesome question. Um, because it's definitely a problem. You know, it's, it's physics based, right? So these dodgeballs are going to collect on the lowest level. And there's, there's a level called Temple, which has these, it's three tiers and... Um, kind of this really interesting layout, but unfortunately all the dodgeballs just wind up on the bottom, and so that's just where everybody hangs out, so. Right. Um, but you'll actually see on this level, I started adding these railings, and you'll see them on some of the higher platforms. They stick up a little bit higher than the rest, and they will collide with dodgeballs, but not players. Oh, okay. So they don't really mess up your, you know, they don't send you flying in weird directions. But a dodgeball that's just bouncing around slowly will, um, naturally kind of collect on that and stay on the higher ledge, which which should spread people out a little more. Um, the other thing, when I added power-ups, I made sure to place the spawns at all different layers, mm -hmm. which again helps keep people on different levels, and if you throw a ball at someone that's on level 2 or 3, then the dodgeball will probably hang out up there a little more. But it's definitely a problem, and when I'm building levels, I, I try to keep that in mind. Because um, there's really no good solution to getting around that. I don't want to have dodgeballs just disappear and teleport um, more than they already do. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, so this is hoops, and you're trying to get... This is honestly not the best map for it. The hoops aren't in the best position because you can very quickly shoot them again through the hoop. Um, but you're trying to pick up that yellow ball and throw it through the enemy ring. Um, 
and it's this map is it's honestly one of the f just faster and frantic. Uh, so I hit you like right after you scored. Perfect. <laughs> um, right, which is which is what I want, right? Like I want that. <laughs> like oh god, I only have a second. Um, but so here's the other problem with with this mode in particular and on this map. Um, it does channel people. You know, nobody's on the higher levels here. Nobody's on these other ramps because you're just in this pit in the center column trying to get the dodgeball. And the dodgeball generally doesn't go anywhere else. Um, so that's that's a flaw that I gotta fix. And, and it can be fixed just by moving the hoops a little bit. Oh, I'm shooting through the wrong hoop. Um, you know, that's that's not a hard change to make and that would probably spread the action out a lot more. Right. And so, you know, that's... Unfortunately, what I'm trying to do is make every map work with every mode, and that means that maybe some combinations are suboptimal. And this is this is honestly probably one of the less optimal combinations. Oops, and this map. Um, I like um, if you as soon as this is over, which will probably be soon, because <laughs> it's nine to eight. Um, if you want to switch to the airborne map, I find that one's pretty good for oops. Airborne, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, someone's asking if you can lower the sound effects a bit. If you go into um, yeah, I got options it. and audio, okay. It's that it's that chat delay thing. <laughs> yep, gotcha. Um, so I, I guess um, uh, another thing that uh, can be big with the the gaming community is is mods or like user content. Uh, is that something that you're looking at? Yeah, it, it is. Um, so one great thing about this very simple style, the fact that the levels aren't realistic, they're kind of boxy, geometric, um, that you can make a pretty interesting level with not a lot of time. Um, you know, without a lot of, you know, level building expertise, without a lot of different expensive 3D models. So it is a perfect candidate for a level editor situation, um, and I like I'm super aware of of how that can make a game last forever because then you just have a million different maps and a million different mods. Um, the question is, it's hard to build a level editor, and okay. is it going to be worth it? Right? Like, it's only really worth it if you have a community of like a hundred thousand players, because otherwise, you know, not as many people are going to even play your map. Um, and no one's Which you know, makes sense, try yeah. to try to sell it, like you know, you won't make any money or you know, because there's just not enough people to buy it. Yeah. Um, so it's something I'm I'm keeping an eye on and it's just not like my number one priority. My number one priority is building up the audience with all kinds of other stuff. Um, and right now it's easy enough if someone uh, just a couple days ago someone on the Reddit uh, the subreddit for this game, they made something in Google SketchUp, like a level design. And I can take that and build a level out of it, and it's actually probably easier for me to build it and take like a day um, than to like build a level editor. So until there's this critical mass of players and people trying to get their content into the game, right? Something like that works fine. Like I love to see people's ideas for levels. You know, they can download Unity for free and start messing around and, and building stuff. They won't be able to you know play test it, but they can still get a good prototype going together. Right. And uh, you know then. It's not the limiting factor at this point, uh, but it would be awesome, right? Like in a perfect world, I would I would have one of those because I'd love to see what people come up with. Um, and it does, like I said, it works well with the game's style because I'm never going to be able to build a, a Team Fortress 2 level. Like that's that takes you know a year's worth of time to build something at the same quality level right, as well. what they have. But so you know, someone can prototype one of these levels in in not that much time. So I think it could be a lot of fun for people. Very cool. And I did try to build a lot of the game logic in ways that are that is flexible, uh, so that people could maybe tweak. They could say, okay, what is the score value for a hoop? You know, does the super ball show up? Do you get points for this certain thing? Um, so they could kind of mix and match game modes as they want. So it's not really full modding, but it does seem like at some point I could really open it up to just a whole big menu of parameters. Right. And that way you can kind of... Or different power-ups, right? Like, I think a lot of people are finding that, you know, if they add jetpacks and 
laser laser dodgeballs. It's this interesting combination that's different than you know the usual deathmatch style game. And so I think people could maybe combine certain default power-ups with different game modes and create something that feels like a brand new kind of game mode. So um, what I'd like to do is kind of create more options like that for players, more more parameters, and that way they don't need to really do any coding, and I can just uh, very flexibly change the rules of the game on the fly. But yeah, I mean, I, that's a, that's a long-winded answer, but uh, I, I love the idea and I want to support it however I can, because uh, I know pe you know, people love that and it's the kind of thing you, you gotta have with a multiplayer game to keep, the, keep it alive. Get my butt handed to me. Yeah. Um, what you can do if, um, you know, a lot of people do just focus on getting the ball, but the, the great thing is you can you can just play, like, deep defense. Um, you can just uh, hang out near the, well, I guess, your own hoop and attack anyone that comes near it. Um, or you can just, like, dedicate yourself to protecting whoever's on your team that's carrying the ball. And that way, uh, if you just focus on one thing, it's a little easier than just scrambling for the yellow ball, because that's usually right. what everybody tries to do. <laughs> the mad scramble. Yeah. Um, so here's the, here's the other funny thing about a multiplayer game like this, is a lot of people are very hesitant to buy into an indie multiplayer game, right? Like, there's been so many examples of games that just, you know, they're good games, and then it just, there's no community around them. Like, they just disappear. Which, of course, is like this self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like, people say, well, you know, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of people playing the game, so I'm, I'm not going to play it, or I'll wait and see, and then everyone waits and sees, right. and nobody plays the game. So, this is something I think about all the time. <laughs> it's my number one, uh, I guess, obstacle. And what I'm hoping to do, so first of all, is because there's so much... AI in the game, right? Like, you don't actually need any humans to play a game. And I think the AI is pretty good, you know, it does the complex stuff like passing and blocking and defending, so that playing against the AI is, is at least interesting. Um, but more than that, I really want to add a lot of kind of single-player content as well, so that let's say you buy the game and never play online, for whatever reason, you'll still feel like you got your, you know, ten bucks worth or whatever. Right. Um, and so that was a pretty recent addition. With, I added a bunch of challenge modes. Um, so it's these little special scenarios where you're equipped with, in one instance, you have a jetpack and strong homing dodgeballs. And your AI teammates will, you're going to fly around towards the ceiling. Your AI teammates will pass your dodgeballs. Um, and then you try to score these kind of alley-oops or helicopters on the enemy team. And you're trying to rack up as many points as you can in two minutes. Right. And it's just... It's ridiculous, I mean, because you're so overpowered, but it's okay because it's a single-player mode, um, and you're just raining down destruction on these kind of helpless enemies, and it actually it feels pretty awesome. Um, Speaking of raining down add... destruction, yeah. Bloody Knights is kicking my butt right now, it's ridiculous. Bloody Knights, um, yeah. You gotta, so I, I would love to add like a rivalry, <laughs> like flag, like they have in TF2, <laughs> if someone is owning you that uh, they get a special little icon. Oh, we won! All right. Um, you might, if you want to change to capture the cube, and you can actually do that. Oh, you actually, you're probably not. No, you are the host. Yep. Um, you can go to match settings and change to capture the cube, and um, I don't know what level would be good. Um, and so this is a good level for it too. Um, so this is capture the flag. It's another one of the game modes. Um, so two two teams can capture the flag from each other. Um, you can also hit each other with the flag, um, and the flag doesn't need to be in the base for you to score anything. Oh wow! Okay, um, I see. And again, this is a mode where passing is is really really key, because if you if you align yourselves correctly, you could just like pass it and you know get ten points in the. Uh, 20 seconds, so... Yeah, I just saw what just happened there. It was like, the flag got thrown across the room and, um, someone scored a point. Yep. Uh, now, uh, Gustav was asking about the soundtrack. Now, I know, uh, we talked about that a bit, uh, regarding, like, some of the artists and stuff. Um, he's, he's asking as far as what's the future for the soundtrack. Is the music at all reactive to things, such as score, if someone gets a power-up, etc.? Uh, so right now, the... The... 
lights on the arena do pulse to the music um, at a very like basic level, just kind of like average volume. There's a couple different you know EQ bands that it listens to, and I can actually program different lights to respond to different bands to create something that's a little more uh, dynamic looking. But it's still still pretty basic, and I I would love to take it in that direction of you know when someone scores. Or like the match is really close to ending, that like all the lights shut down, and then like there's just a couple spotlights that focus on whoever's leading at the time. Right. Um, or that maybe it detects uh, certain parts of the music, that say, oh, this is the like the big build up, and then the silence, and then the drop, and then the lights kind of go extra crazy for that moment. Right. That'd be cool. Um, so you know that's that's something that is on my kind of list of awesome polished things to do. Um, and in general, the, the arenas need way more kind of interesting reactive lights, like um, even if they're not specifically tuned to the music, just things that animate and rotate and, and pulse a little more. Oh, I missed it. There we go. Because um, it adds a lot to the game, and it's it's just a matter of time, like, sinking in that effort to, to build those things. Um, you know, it, it's tough because it's one of those things that, that is awesome, but it I can't, like necessarily sell the game like it doesn't really have a tangible benefit the way that a new level or a new mode has right um so it's it's kind of a balance on like which features i want to work on or that i think would be cool versus things that like yeah this is you know the most important thing that the game needs at this moment <laughs> right game game breaking or you know yeah things that right bug fixing bug fixing whatever it might be yeah um so going back to the single player stuff I think the the one other thing it needs is kind of a long form, kind of roguelike mode where it's so again solo mode, and you are battling waves of enemies, and the enemies might be slightly different every time. So one round they all have this laser ball power up, or next you're fighting a bunch of jetpack robots, or or maybe some of them are stronger and they take more hits to kill. Right. And then as you fight through the waves, you can select different perks. So these are things that maybe you can freeze time for a second, or like it's an EMP and all the enemy bots like just flop to the floor. Some crazy power up that again would break multiplayer, but it's super fun on single player. And so every time you kind of have to choose um, which perks you think are suited to your style or the enemies you're facing, um, or complement the perks you already have. Um, and then as you play, you know maybe through this 15 or 20 minute session. You know, it acts more like a, a run in the way that, like, Spelunky, your nuclear throne, or, um, you know, those types of games have. Um, again, something that, as a, as a solo player, you could you could play over and over again and, and feel like it's a, you know, it's a good value for your investment. Right. Um, and then, additionally, like, you could maybe find new perks as you play. So, like, you play a bunch of multiplayer, like, oh, you just found this new perk, which will then unlock this option in this new, you know, arcade roguelike mode. Um, you know, this kind of progression, persistence type of thing, uh, which, you know, it's going to be a little bit of work, but I think it's it's just important. You got to have something like that, because if you don't, people are just going to be afraid that, you know, multiplayer and I won't be able to find anyone, and uh, then they just give it a pass, so. Right, exactly. The other thing I'd love to have is um, kind of this loot drop system. So you know how in TF2, like you'll collect different scrap metal and you'll find different weapons that you right. can kind of melt down. Trade hats. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'd love to get into that a little more, and I'd love to have um, basically a little piece of equipment that you'll find and then equip, and you upgrade them by performing different trick shots. Okay. So like these kind of like little mini missions, because I know like <laughs> I know I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. Like I love kind of like little goals every time. That way you get to min max a little more. So let's say right now I've, I'm equipped with this, you know, uh, power pack, <clears throat> and it's uh, the way I upgrade is performing these helicopter shots. So now I can play capture the cube, and play the objectives there, but I know like, oh, whenever I get a chance, I should try to do a helicopter, because that'll help me upgrade my power pack. And then you do that enough, then you can craft them together with other things, and then unlock some either cosmetic thing, or again, some new perks in that single player mode. Um, and that way it just, it creates this little like gremlin in the back of your brain that's like, every little thing you do is advancing you towards some goal. 
Right. Uh, which, uh, you know, as a player, I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> and hopefully it won't distract too much from the game, right? Because if you have too many of those little tiny things, you can maybe lose focus on what's actually fun about the game. But I think I can find a good balance of stuff that's, uh, you know, gives you that itch. Like, oh, I want to I wanna play another match because I know I, I'm so close to upgrading my little, you know, bonus equipment piece. Right. <clears throat> Uh, people are really uh, so I studied psychology in school and I know like how powerful that stuff can be and so like at some like cynical level like you don't you don't want to like abuse it and like trick people into liking your game but on the other hand like I know it, it's just fun people love that stuff I love that stuff and I think it could fit well in the game so um, you know obviously studying the mobile market you can see that people definitely abuse that stuff right with you know timers and um, limited time stuff, and they, they really, to me, it starts feeling like you're you're kind of hacking uh, into, well, that's not the right word, but hacking kind of taking wallets. advantage. <laughs> yeah, just like uh, taking advantage of people's like tendencies, right, in the way that a casino does. Right. Um, and so, I want to stay away from that. But again, you know, if, if I'm not charging for these things, then it's not quite as evil. Um, it's more just like, oh, here's a fun extra thing you can do, and if you <laughs> right. know. If, if that's what I can add to the game, then then that'd be awesome. Then that's my mission. Um, so it's I mean it's funny. There's so much I, I want to do to the game, and it's uh, you know on some level on some level you still gotta just do bug fixes and add kind of the boring stuff and you know UIs and menus are, are boring. I hate right. <laughs> I'm, I hate working on them, and I'm bad at that stuff. How how do you um, balance like you know? <laughs> Okay, today I have to fix bugs. Okay, today I get to work on some cool new feature. Like, how do you balance that? Yeah. A lot of it does depend on... I'm Like, I'm always on the Steam forums. I'm always on the subreddit. And on Twitter, too. So I'm collecting feedback and kind of getting a pulse from players all the time. And if, if I start kind of getting the sense that people are saying, yeah, we really need that kind of team auto-balancing feature, you know, it's really important to me, then I... You know, and then other people chime in and agree. And I'm like, okay, then I need to bump that up. Right. Um, obviously, any kind of game-breaking bug is always priority one. Um, or if I see like, okay, people aren't playing multiplayer as much. Like maybe I need a new level. Or um, you, know, you, you kind of feel it out and you try to balance it a little bit. Um, like I said, like one update will be on content, the others on more little features and stuff. Um, give people a reason to keep coming back and checking out new stuff. Right. Um, and then, you know, lately I, uh, I hadn't updated my, like, trailer or screenshots in a really long time. Probably that was because I hadn't polished the arena visuals at all in a long time, so I spent a good two weeks on polishing everything up again. Um, and then said, so, okay, great, now I can take some screenshots that look half-decent and update my trailer because that is something I need to do before I can reach out to press and more YouTubers and right. um, so you know that's that's the other balance too is um, figuring out when to fit in all the PR stuff you gotta do too so Absolutely. Um, which can take up a good 50% of your time it's uh, it's a lot <laughs> yeah is this uh, and, and is this sort of been your your first major Sort of, uh, business endeavor as far as uh, game development. Um. No, so I so I've been full time solo development for about four years. Um. So I'm used to the kind of like, you know, crunchy wear all the hats type situation. Right. Um. This is probably the game though that because it's it's selling while I'm working on it, it's a little bit different. There's a little, like, different pressures. Um, on one hand, it's really nice because it's making money as I build it, so I don't quite have the same financial pressure. Um, but I know that, you know, people are playing it, and if I don't update the game, they'll get bored and leave, and I don't want that at all. Like, I, I want to keep the momentum as much as possible. So there's almost a, a slightly different layer of, of stress about... Um, keeping everything active and like, oh, I gotta add that new level because people are gonna walk away and <laughs> you get a little bit uh, paranoid about that. <clears throat> um, do you want to switch to a new level? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, Strudel says, I don't get it. I don't get what to do. All of a sudden I was holding a cube. 
what the hell do I do with that? <laughs> um, so Strudel, just to, just to update you, it's sort of like capture the flag. So right now I'm on the blue team, uh, and Dak Killfeed is taking the red flag or the red cube, and he's gonna drop it off at our blue base to score. And that looks like Bot Dave just stole the flag there. Uh, so essentially it's capture the flag. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead. We'll uh, jump on to a different uh, mode. Oh, uh, any suggestions? Uh, let me see. Um, how about some... So I'd say elimination, but it's a little different like when you're streaming because then there might be periods of time where you're just spectating. But it, I think it still might be fun. Oh, it's I'd all good. Give, I, yeah, I, I give elimination a, a try. Yeah, well, you know, and it's still kind of exciting because it usually winds up in this duel of, uh, you know, two people. Yeah, so uh, I, f I foresee me being out within the first five seconds, and then it gives <laughs> right. me an opportunity to talk with my uh, my viewers, so that's okay. <laughs> so the key here is don't just sprint out into the middle um, like you did with all the other modes, or like, you know, like people do with the other modes. Cause so you notice. You, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You kind of want to hang back. So now it's three on one, which is, uh... Oh, nice. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> um, so I gotta say, though, so I know Early Access has taken a lot of heat lately. There have been a couple kind of high-profile blow-ups. People that say, like, well, it's... That was a nice shot. <laughs> um, people saying, you know, the game's not making enough money, so we're just gonna call it a day and release it. Like, Double Fine kind of did that with... Um, space base and, and, and other games the, the stomping right ground or the stomping land or whatever that was. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, which which sucks. Like it's a horrible thing, um, particularly because I really like the model. Um, you know, this is early access, and I've tried my best to kind of live up to, you know, the idea of you put the thing out, you've sold the thing, you've made this commitment. You know, you have to update it. You got to communicate with the players. You got to tell them kind of what your plan is. Um, and, but the thing is, I'm sure a ton of people are looking at this thing like, yeah, it's, it's cool, but it's early access, so I'm, you know, I'm not going to buy in quite yet. I'll wait. And, you know, hopefully they all remember to come back when it's released. Um, but I also can't blame people for being very skeptical of early access titles, um, because it is super easy to get burned. Um, but at least in my experience, the fact that, you know, there's money coming in while I'm building this, I know that there's less pressure to like, okay, well, I gotta release it because I'm not making any money. I can say, like, yes, it's it's being funded. I can spend the time to add this single-player content right. because I know it won't be just, you know, waste a waste of time because nobody will play it because I can see that people are playing it. I can get that feedback right away. So, you know, ideally, like, it's a great model, um, but, I mean, it's... It's also super open to abuse, and uh, I think Denied. there's some companies that, unfortunately, I think with Double Fine, like, you know, they made the right decision personally, like a like a business decision, right? To say, you know, we can't spend two years on a game that that people aren't buying. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, back in the day, like, you had to build the whole game before you got any money for it. So it seems kind of weird to say, like, yeah, we're not making any money now, um, so we're just gonna stop. It's like, yeah, but you also haven't released the game yet. Um, so I see they made their kind of right decision for them, but it, it kind of like did more damage to the model long term. So it kind of hurt other developers, in, in my opinion. Like, right. Not, not that Early Access had like a great <laughs> reputation to begin with because it already had, you know, a lot of those uh, bad examples. So anyways, it's kind of my own like frustration. Like I'm really happy the model exists, but uh, um, it's I'm also kind of bummed that you know, it could probably be a lot more successful if it didn't have that stigma. Right. Well, I mean, I, I think the thing that I like about this is, even if this was the finished product, it's, you know, right now it's a $10 game, it's it's fun, it has that entertainment value. So it's not like, um, I, you know, you, the, the promise of, of future builds is always there, but at, at least right now, it's, it's a playable game. It's not like it's yeah. been released and it's... You know, we don't get any use out of it, so I, right. I do appreciate that. Um, a couple people in chat, uh, one, someone asked um, thoughts about having this ported to mobile, and someone else was saying, what about for the Wii? <laughs> or the Wii U, I guess. Um, so I would I would love to have this on consoles. Um, 
I, it does have gamepad support, although I, there's some bugs with it still. But I saw I your tweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there was a pretty bad bug that uh, really uh, screwed someone else over. Um, I fixed it, obviously, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, like, they weren't able to use... They had to use the gamepad to look, but then the keyboard to move, and they were nice. like, this is stupid, like, yeah, like, it's not <laughs> supposed to be like that. Um, so, anyways, that was funny. Um, but, uh, I think it could work really well with local multiplayer, like, you know, like I said, growing up, those were the games I played, that's kind of how I, uh, you know, spent my nights. Um, I love, you know, couch multiplayer type stuff, and the game could work really well, like, it's I don't actually like gamepad shooters, right? Um, but this game actually works pretty well because you're not rapid firing; you're just kind of like tracking someone slowly. And you know, I never use a gamepad for shooters, and I'm, I still do almost as well with it. So I think it could work great in that format. I'd love to get into consoles. You know, there's, you know, that's kind of the new frontier, I guess, for developers of my size. Um, and it's, you know, it's just a matter of, of doing the work and. Ideally, too, like, I'd be able to find, if I can prove a success on Steam, then maybe Sony or Microsoft would come to me and say, hey, like, we'll give you promotion, we'll give you funding. Um, I, ideally, they get in some kind of bidding war over it. Um, but yeah, something like the Wii could work really well. Um, so mobile is interesting because it is actually a shooter that could work well on, t on mobile. Right. Um, again, because it's not rapid fire clicking. Um, it's kind of the smooth movement, and um, it would be really interesting to see if that works. And I also, as much as I disparaged mobile gaming before, um, I like the idea of oh, these teams are super unbalanced. Perfect. <laughs> I don't, that's a that's a bug. There's eight people on blue <laughs> and three on red, so that's fun. Thanks. <laughs> I'll switch to red. Um, I like the idea of like kind of proving concept out on PC, right? And then moving it to mobile later once it has kind of the word of mouth, because then you're more likely to get featuring. You know, you maybe won't disappear quite as quickly. Um, so you know, and plus I use Unity, right? So it like can't be that. I, I say it now, it can't be that hard to port. I'm sure I'll <laughs> come up with a, a bunch of problems, but um, yeah, I think it could work pretty well, and you know. I could kind of tone down a lot of the glow and reflection stuff so that it actually runs pretty well on these devices, so... Right. Um, also, the, the other kind of funny thing about mobile is uh, the last game I built was a real-time strategy game, and it it also had multiplayer, and um, nobody plays real-time multiplayer games on mobile. Like, you just... You just <laughs> nobody does it. Uh, you play turn-based stuff all the time. It's perfect for that. And so what killed me is when I originally built the game, it's like a competitive player versus player pseudo hacking game, right? So it's kind of like all the fake hacking scenes you see in movies. Um, and it was originally built with like local multiplayer, so over Bluetooth. Like you get a buddy, your phones hook up, and then you can um, kind of hack into each other. Right. And then it got like reviewed in some of these uh, you know mobile gaming sites, and like, oh, oh man, I really wish this had online multiplayer. It's such a shame. And uh, I never built it because I knew that nobody plays, like it's, you'd never get critical mass. You'd never be able to like, oh, let me find a player. Oh, there's one. <laughs> it's like never going to happen. Right. Um, and so I didn't build it and then I like lost points because I didn't have it. So then I spent like two or three months adding it and then of course nobody played it. <laughs> right, of <laughs> and course. I didn't even get any more reviews. I didn't get any more featuring. So I was like, I'm super bitter about that. <laughs> um, and so this game being a real-time multiplayer game uh, it wouldn't lost. work if it were the first way I launched it but like if there's a ton of people playing it online I, you know, I could probably even do cross-platform right so like someone on a phone could play against someone on the PC oh, cool, so, at least, yeah. so um, yeah I don't know what what is going on here with these teams um, it's all good go life to... isn't fair yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's funny too cuz I thought I switched to red but now I'm back on blue um, uh, yeah, so Sploosh actually, uh, he, he just says, I tell Eric I just bought his game, I saw you just joined in here, so. Oh, welcome, awesome, welcome thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. Lost. I'm going to try to switch back to red again. I don't know what's going on there. So there is, if you go into match settings, um, there is shuffle, 
there's balance and preserve, and balance, so different options balance. for maintaining teams. It's on auto balance. Okay, so that's interesting. So it is auto balancing people incorrectly. Um, this is this. I mean, the other could probably it be based early, on early access. No, it can't be based on level. Um, because you have it, like some I think it looks at level. school. <laughs> yeah. It looks at score from the last round, but I wonder if there's something particular about elimination because it people respawn um, in different rounds, not like there's five rounds to one match, right? And maybe it's trying to auto balance like mid round or something. Um, so you actually get a lot of round good uh, feedback lost. on uh, bugs like this, right? Like, <laughs> absolutely. It's nice to be able to see this stuff in real time, and you know, it's not ideal that uh, people are playing a game that has bugs, but. This is, I'd say, a, a minor one. <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 as I mentioned, I do stream uh, Daisy, and so uh, my viewers here are, are definitely not strangers to early access games. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're, we, we mention that all the time. It's like, guys, listen, you're playing developmental builds. You're not, this isn't final product. Right. <laughs> um, you know, that's one of the criticisms against early access is that you're basically paying to be QA for people. Um, and, you know, from some perspective, I, I see that, but I think when you're buying into early access, like, you're, you're aware that that's, you know, you're playing stuff that you build a new feature, you're, you're not going to be able to test it super thoroughly, um, and, like, sometimes things will break, and yep. the catch is you communicate it, and then you fix it as soon as you can. Um, and as a developer, it's super helpful, because without human testers, there's no way I would find all the bugs. It's just, like, not possible. <laughs> so, um... You know, it's just one of those, one of those things. Um. Uh, uh, crap. Hi, Rhinosaur. Hey, Rhinosaur is on. Did you just get this game too? <laughs> um. So one thing I'm planning as a way to get, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for a way to kind of get more people into the game. Um, within a couple weeks, I'm going to be doing a charity live stream event. Oh, that's awesome! And uh, uh, so basically, I, it'll be a week-long kind of thing, and I'll get as many streamers as possible to play the game and uh, basically duel other channels. So if there's if you have a buddy that has a channel or a rival channel, whatever, you can you challenge them to a match. You can recruit players um, from your subscribers. Or I can fill in players from people that are on, you know, the Steam forums. So it'll be kind of full teams of players. Um, you can play like, you know, just just one set of matches, or if you want to do multiple ones over the week, you know, whatever is convenient. And then during that week, half of sales will go to charity. Oh, that's amazing! Um, yeah. I think that'd be a good reason to like, you know, get people playing the game, talking about it, and obviously, um, you know, the charity thing is, is helpful and a good way to kind of give people a reason to to play it when they otherwise might not so definitely well you um, know let me uh if you can maybe uh, just fire me off a, a quick email with some details um because i know even through archetype gaming the uh, which is the, the group i'm a part of um it, archetype sort of has a history in uh, competitive gaming and like <laughs> quake and and all, all the uh all the FPS from back in the day, so I, I think this would be a, a lot of fun to get uh, like uh, Scarfino and, and a few of the other guys involved. Round one. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome, and that's the whole idea is, you know, the game is way more fun when you're playing it uh, with people you know, and it's a, it's a great chance to get teams of people playing together or against each other. Uh, it really kind of raises the stakes there. Uh, Gustav says maybe uh, put your game in a humble bundle, and I yeah. <laughs> think I actually saw it on the humble bundle. <clears throat> so it's on the Lost. humble store, and it's in like I have a widget, uh, which allows me sell the game at a. So it's different than a bundle because you're paying basically full price for it. Right. Um, whereas a bundle, you're getting a bunch of other games. Usually, you're you're getting a game for fifty cents or so. Um, so yes, I I've spent a bunch of time like hanging out with humble bundle people. So like I think I have good contacts there, and I think the game is a good fit. And hopefully, when the time is right, I'll be able to get it into a bundle. Um, the catch is if you do that too soon, right? Now you've just killed any value of your game because 
because everyone's like, well, the game's really only worth 50 cents. Right. And good luck getting anyone to pay, like, your original full price for it after that. Um, the thing is, like, it's such a catch because it's a multiplayer game and I need a ton of people. And it's possible that doing an event like that would get this awesome critical mass of people. Um, so it's something I'm thinking about and planning on someday, but it's not going to happen definitely until the game's, you know, done. Yes, <laughs> like, yes, yes. Not while it's in early access. And probably then it'll be like six months to a year after it's after it's out. You know, there's all kinds of other, you know, that's, that's almost like the last thing you do. Um, you know, you obviously want to put it through Steam sales first and... Um, you don't want to like kind of destroy the value right at the start, but you know I love I love the idea and I think it's something someday in the future for the game. But you know you don't want to. It's it's so hard because there's all these things that I think would help the game, right. but it, like it's just not the right time for it yet. So it's it's kind of just you're trying to play your cards at, at just the right moment and. Unfortunately, a lot of it's just guesswork, too. Like, there's no magic formula for what works and what doesn't. And maybe if I got in a bundle tomorrow that, like, now the game sells a million because everyone knows about it and everybody loves it and plays it. And it reaches this critical mass and it's perfect. And, like, so maybe I'm, like, doing a really stupid thing by holding off on that. Um, and so nobody knows. And right. every time you ask for advice, it's, like, totally different than what was true six months ago. Um, so it's such a funny world to be in right well, I mean, this not is, enough <laughs> this is entrepreneurship uh, bottom line that's mm -hmm. what it comes down to you get to make scary yeah. decisions daily you have no idea yep. if it's right or not <laughs> on like very little data very yes. little con concrete um you just kind of keep your ear to the ground and try to see okay what's what's working these days what's going to work for my game um and you know do the best you can because you know, again, like, the same plan for a single-player puzzle platformer is very different than what I want for a multiplayer game, or what's going to work for a multiplayer game. Right. So, Too it's funny. Slow. It's just... <laughs> every every day is a, kind of a funny battle. <laughs> um, yeah, someone else was saying, like, early access game on sale defeats the point, and, you know, that's, that's true, too. Um, I'm not sure what the final price is going to be. It, Right now it's 10. I may launch for 10 or 15. Right. Um, I, you know, ideally the the early access copy is cheaper because you're rewarding people for kind of taking the chance on you. Absolutely. Um, but 15 for a game that's really pushing online multiplayer is not a good, you know, that's not at the level where people can kind of impulse buy. Like even even 10 bucks is like, you know. I'm hoping that I can get a critical mass of people interested in the game for ten bucks. Um, and you don't know. I mean, it's it's gonna be. You, just, you don't know, yeah. As, and as I, it goes, I, you'll find it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you if you go on sales too early, then you're it's tough, right? Um, also, I mean, I think the people that are buying in early access, like, they're not going to feel burned if the final copy is still $10, because I think the people that are playing it now, um, you know, they know they're in early access, but they also get to kind of give feedback on the game, and a lot of the ideas that found their way in the final game did come from people that are playing the game and gave me a suggestion on the Steam forums or Twitter, right. um, like a... Uh, like the latest power up, the boomerang power up, that was totally from some user. I'm like, yeah, that's an awesome idea, and it's gonna make the game better. And I, I built it in. That's awesome. And so I think apparently, that, that's. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. Apparently, my son thinks that's that's awesome too. I don't know if you just heard him squeal in the background. <laughs> I, I actually thought that was like a parakeet or something. A parakeet? No, he's uh, he's about four months old, so he's he's in the squealing stage right now. Uh, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> but loves the boomerang ball. Um, so uh, one of the one of the comments uh, by by Quasi and I, I agree is the uh, I, I really enjoy how smooth the spectating is. It's not um, it, it's not choppy. It's it's very uh, clean transitions, very smooth. Uh, makes it even spectating enjoyable, which is which is kind of nice. Yeah, I um, I added that. Thank you, first of all. Um, I added that feature for um, when I was in last Pax East. 
I wanted to have a separate monitor, so there were four stations people could play on, and then a fifth monitor that was always in perm spectator mode. Um, so I needed something that I didn't need to manage, but kind of automatically, um, you know, moved between players and tried to capture dramatic angles. Um, I just lost to a butt. <laughs> Um, it's embarrassing. And so it's, it's this kind of auto-spectator <laughs> mode that um, you know focuses on players and, and uh, kind of swivels around and makes things look kind of dramatic. Right. Um, and, but there's there's some other spectator modes too. You can go into first player mode um, or uh, or just free look mode where you can just fly around and look wherever. Um, I do definitely need a replay system though. Um, it's going to be tricky to add because it's physics based, right? So I'll need to find some way to like rewind stuff and um, But you know, I could imagine some amazing highlights getting captured and, and replayed uh, With that system. Absolutely. Um, what Jake uh, is asking how many hours you personally in the game? Do you know? Uh, a bunch. So my, <laughs> my, my steam hour log is at like 1200. Ooh. Um, so it's 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 tough to measure though because some of that time like I just have Unity open, like that doesn't mean I'm actually playing the game and moving around. Um, on the other hand, there's also a lot of time I'm working on the game, but I don't have like I'm not logged in right, so it's not tracking those hours. Um, so my that's the best guess I have. It, it's at least a thousand. Wow. Um, I, I've been working on the game for about a year and a half, I guess, at this point. Um, full time. So whatever that adds up to, it's a lot of time. <laughs> wow! Did Strittle uh -huh. just win that match for everyone? Ridiculous! I think she's hacking. <laughs> Must be. So there was a um, when people play against the bots, they tend to develop a certain vendetta against one of them. <laughs> and I, I swear that the bots, like the AI, is all the same. There's no oh nice dodge. You know, it's not like one bot is actually different than the rest. But what <laughs> happens is. You know, a couple times in a row, Luigi Bot kills you, and then you're like, oh, maybe Luigi Bot is like my nemesis. And then every time he kills you, you're like, Luigi Bot. <laughs> but right, right. It stands out a little more, and now you have a rivalry. So a lot of people, and it, it does usually happen to be Luigi Bot. I don't know why. Um, that's the bot that they think is like the most overpowered. <laughs> I always, I always notice the uh, Seth Bot, but that's because uh, my wife's handle on Twitch is Seth the Cat, and our our cat is Seth. So. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the one that stands out for me. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> what I what I really should do is make the bots like, I could do that, right? Like when a bot after they've killed you a couple times, right. like actually change the AI to like seek you out more, <laughs> and like actually build rivalries. Um, is there any plan for a team captain that works like commanders? Um, let's see. So I hadn't thought of that specifically, but let me think about it. Um, so I'm trying to think what other powers the captain would have. Like maybe they have a special power up that nobody else has, um, <clears throat> or maybe like the captain. If the captain is killed, then the team loses. Whereas if the other players uh, get like hit, VIP then rounds, the game goes <laughs> yeah, like VIP, which would be pretty cool. Um, like that protect could be the VIP. Well. Yeah. Um, I guess the problem is with the VIP. Your when you play, you would just want to like hide somewhere, right. but that can be kind of interesting too because you know everyone's chasing after you. Um, also, maybe like when you kill the VIP, you know someone else on the team becomes the VIP. So, you know if if to you being the VIP is not that interesting, when you get hit, now you're back to being the bodyguard. Right. Um, and you know something like that, like it wouldn't be too hard for me to add that kind of thing in. Um, because of the way I tried to build the game and make it flexible, so something like that is like totally possible. Um, and yeah, I might <laughs> I might wind up doing something like that. That's cool. Um, and yeah, so there are the Steam forums, and there's you know you can obviously start whatever discussion you want. And I love when people put suggestions up there because then other players can chime in on that too. Um, you know, sometimes people have an idea, but it's not like maybe like the final perfect idea. And then other people, you know, you kind of have that brainstorm effect happening. Right. And you wind up with something a lot cooler. Um, so uh, I definitely encourage people to, to put stuff there. That way I can respond to it, other people can, can respond to it. Double kill. And uh, yeah, a lot of that stuff does wind up in the game, so. Awesome. 
Um, Eric, how are we? How are we doing for time? I, I know you said I, I had you for an hour. Or we're about yeah. half an hour over schedule. <laughs> how you doing? Are you okay? You have to. You have to jet. I'm good. We could. We could probably stop at eight thirty. Um, that'd probably be a good good session length. All right. Well, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna still be going for a little bit, but uh, I, I do uh, do appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, this this game is crazy. I, I definitely enjoy it quite a bit. Um, was excited to have you on when I when I found you on Twitter there, and uh, looking forward to uh, more more gameplay sessions. Yeah, and thanks for having me. Like I love this kind of stuff. I love chatting with people, and um, really appreciate you uh, inviting me onto the stream. That's awesome. Uh, Mrs. Megna is going to tweet out a, a picture for me uh, momentarily. I think with. Uh, Levi was just hanging out on my lap watching the game. I, I think he really likes it. The bright colors, the flashing lights. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. One, so just, sorry, one last comment. Because <laughs> then I'll shut up. Um, <laughs> one kind of nice aspect about this game is that it doesn't have... You're not stabbing people.